The first step in choosing parts for a retrofit is deciding whether or not you're going to either use a low beam or a bi-xenon projector. And what you have to consider in picking that out is whether or not your car uses two bulbs for the low and the high beam or a single dual filament bulb for the low and the high beam. Uh, so if you have like a 9006 and a 9005 as your low and your high, you have the option to use either a dedicated low beam projector like this Lexus RX, or you can use a bi-xenon projector like this Acura TL. If, you're, if your car uses a single bulb like an H4, an H13, or a 9007, you have to use a bi-xenon projector so that you can retain the full functionality of your low and your high beam. If you don't use a bi-xenon, then you're going to lose your high beam function after the retrofit. So the way these work is that a low beam projector just has a single cutoff shield, which is fixed, creates one low beam pattern. There's no ability to change between low and high beam. With a bi-xenon projector, you actually have a shield that creates the beam pattern, and it's actually on a hinge, like you can see here. So when power is inputted to the solenoid, the hinge and the shield actually move forward or down out of the way to expose more light for the high beam. So you can see we have this hooked up to a power supply, and when power is applied, the shield moves out of the way. Again, you get your high beam out of the lens, um, and all of it uses the same single bulb inside of the reflector bulb. So there's no change with the bulb between low and high. So to understand how a bi-xenon projector works a little bit more, we're going to reassemble this TL bi-xenon, and then we'll show the difference between the low and the high beam on a wall.